hi guys welcome back to my channel obs and gun made easy in today's video i'm going to discuss a septic miscarriage also known as a septic abortion this is the last discussion in our topic of miscarriages a septic miscarriage is any miscarriage either a spontaneous or induced miscarriage complicated by a pelvic infection it is most common when an incomplete abortion happens when the retained products of conception get infected Pathology. The causative microorganisms that are usually responsible for causing a septic miscarriage are those normally present in the vagina. The most common anaerobes being bacterioids, anaerobic streptococci, Clostridium welchi, and tetanus. The aerobic organisms include E. coli, Klebsiella, Staphylococcus, Pseudomonas, Group A beta hemolytic streptococcus. In a normal pregnancy, there's three things that prevent a woman from getting a genital infection. The first one being a mucus plug. The mucus plug acts as a glue which sits between the internal os as well as the external os. So, this mucus plug prevents microorganisms from ascending into the uterus. The second protective barrier is the closed cervix. You have a closed internal os as well as a closed external cervical os. The third one that prevents infection from getting into the fetus is the amniotic sac. However, when a miscarriage happens and it ends up as an incomplete miscarriage, remember that the mucus plug has fallen out so there's no protective barrier and the cervix as well is open. So the vaginal microorganisms start to ascend into the uterus. So the first thing they attack is the products of conception. Remember, this is no longer a viable conceptus as it is a miscarriage. So the first infection happens in the products of conception. And if this infected products of conception have not yet been evacuated, the infection starts spreading the microorganisms multiply and spread so you end up with endometritis that is inflammation and infection of the uterus and if that infection is not contained the infection spreads to the fallopian tubes as well as the ovaries so you have tubo ovarian infection which can result into a tubo ovarian abscess and also remember that the uterus is situated between the rectum and the bladder. So anteriorly you have the bladder and posteriorly you have the rectum. Remember that the rectum is part of the large intestine. So between the rectum and the posterior aspect of the uterus you have the pouch of Douglas. So if the infection is not contained it can cause infection of the pouch of Douglas which can result into a pelvic abscess as well as infecting the peritoneum around it causing peritonitis so to summarize what i just explained here we say without the protective barrier the organisms are sent from the vagina attacking the products of conception delayed evacuation of the retained products of conception results in multiplication and spread of bacteria to adjacent structures adjacent structures like the uterus the fallopian tubes the ovaries the parametrium and finally into the peritoneum causing endometritis pelvic inflammatory disease tubal ovarian abscess and eventually peritonitis and remember that if this infection continues to spread, it ends up as a full-blown sepsis. Clinical features of a miscarriage. So from the history, there will be a history of recent spontaneous or uninduced abortion. There will be a fever because of infection, chills and rigors because of infection, palpitations because of infection, low abdominal pain because that's where the infection is in the uterus diarrhea and vomiting because of the infection and also history of foul smelling the vaginal discharge when you examine the patient the patient will look ill febrile or hypothermic to touch the temperature might be over 38 degrees celsius or less than 36 degrees celsius the patient might be in septic shock this is because of overwhelming sepsis
Some of the features of septic shock or overwhelming sepsis are tachycardia, tachypnea and dyspnea, impaired mental state, and there will be renal angle tenderness or not. The renal angle tenderness shows that the infection has spread to the kidneys, meaning pyelonephritis. There will be suprapubic tenderness or generalized abdominal tenderness. The suprapubic tenderness is because of the infected uterus. And the generalized abdominal tenderness might be because of the peritonitis. The uterus may be palpable because there is incomplete abortion. There is retained products of conception. So the uterus might be boggy and tender because of the inflammation and infection. On vaginal examination, there will be foul and purulent discharge and an open cervix. This is because there is retained products of conception, so there's an open cervix. And the purulent discharge is because of the infection. Investigations to be carried out in a septic miscarriage. You do a high vaginal swab for microscopic culture and sensitivity. Remember that some of the microorganisms come from the vagina so you need to do a microscopic culture and sensitivity of those microorganisms you do a urinalysis now a urinalysis is not a diagnostic test but it will just tell you that yeah there is a genital infection so on urinalysis you find leukocytes protein nitrites you do a urine microscopic culture and sensitivity remember that some of the microorganisms come from the urinary tract like the urethra you do the clotting time. The clotting time will help you to see if the patient has already gone into disseminated intravascular coagulation. You do a random blood sugar. Remember that sepsis can cause hypoglycemia. You do an RDT and malaria parasite slide. That is one of the differentials in a septic miscarriage. So you have to rule out malaria. You do a full blood count and differential count. Of course, you might find leukocytosis or neutropenia or thrombocytopenia. Those are some of the things you will find a full blood count that are suggestive of an infection. You do a retroviral test. This is an HIV test. It's supposed to be done in any patient who's having a miscarriage. You do a group and save. Remember that they could have lost a lot of blood or they're already anemic because of the infection or because of the loss of blood. And overwhelming sepsis also causes anemia. You can also do urea and creatinine. Remember that septic miscarriage can complicate into a multi-organ dysfunction because of septic shock as well as overwhelming sepsis. So you have to do urea and creatinine to check the kidney function. You also do a blood culture. So remember, blood culture and all the microscopy culture and sensitivities you are going to order should be done before you start the patient on antibiotics. Other investigations you can do are electrolytes. Remember that in sepsis, you can have deranged electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and chloride. You can also do a C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein is not necessarily diagnostic. But it will tell you if there's infection and inflammation, which is quite obvious. So it's just a waste of money, really. You can also do a serum lactate. Serum lactate will just tell you if there's tissue hypoperfusion or not. An abdominal and pelvic ultrasound are actually helpful and diagnostic. In an abdominal ultrasound, you are looking for free fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Remember, we said one of the complications of septic miscarriage is peritonitis so that might cause free fluid in the peritoneal cavity whilst in the pelvic ultrasound of course you see retained products of conception in the uterus but you're also looking for free fluid in the pouch of douglas remember we say that a pelvic abscess can occur in the pouch of douglas you can also do an abdominal x-ray as well as a chest x-ray in an abdominal x-ray in case of uh, bowel perforation due per due to peritonitis or there's bowel injury chest x-ray if the sepsis has complicated into pulmonary edema or atelectasis complications of a septic miscarriage so there can be local complications or widespread complications the local complications are endometritis 
pelvic inflammatory disease, tubal ovarian abscess, a pelvic abscess, and pyelonephritis. Widespread complications include generalized peritonitis, endotoxic shock, multi-organ dysfunction causing acute renal failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and atelectasis due to pulmonary edema and disseminated intravascular coagulation. You can also have persistent hypotension of less than 90 over 60. This is septic shock. Long-term complications include a chronic pelvic pain because of chronic pelvic inflammatory disease. You can also have chronic or persistent pelvic inflammatory disease, ectopic pregnancy because of the fibrosis and adhesions that occur after the infection. Management of a septic miscarriage. You have an complicated case and a complicated case. In the uncomplicated case, it's a simple septic miscarriage with no complications. So you do adequate resuscitation with intravenous fluids, plus or minus blood transfusion. Remember that one of the complications of a septic miscarriage is anemia. So if they're anemic, you give a blood transfusion. Intravenous broad-spectrum antibiotics, commonly ekephalosporin. You give it for at least 48 hours. 48 to 72 hours of admission you do a gentle manual vacuum aspiration remember that the uterus is friable because of the infection so you do a gentle manual vacuum aspiration to avoid perforation you do the manual vacuum aspiration at least within 8 to 24 hours after giving the intravenous broad spectrum antibiotics you have to give antibiotics before the MVA to at least control the infection. And preferably, it should be performed by an experienced clinician. You have to monitor the urine output of this patient because some of the complications of a septic miscarriage are acute renal failure as well as pyelonephritis. So this can damage the kidney. So you have to monitor the urine output. After 48 to 72 hours, if you are satisfied with the patient outcome, you can discharge the patient on oral antibiotics. So the total of antibiotics plus the admission should be 14 days. And of course, you link them to PAC services. PAC, post aborto Management of a complicated septic miscarriage. When we say complicated, we mean pelvic abscess, complicated unresponsive peritonitis, peritonitis which is not responding to antibiotics, there is bowel perforation maybe during the manual vacuum aspiration, you perforated the uterus, then you perforated the intestines, or there's bowel perforation because of friable intestines due to the peritonitis, you have a septic or injured uterus. Of course, in these complicated cases, your senior is involved and also you should involve the general surgeons. So, a laparotomy in such cases may be life-saving where drainage of a pelvic abscess or drainage of peritoneal pus is done. A peritoneal wash can also be done or a bowel resection or a hysterectomy can be done. But remember that management of these complications depends on the clinical and intra-op findings. This comes to the end of our discussion on septic miscarriages as well as all miscarriages. Don't forget to subscribe and feel free to comment on what topic you'd like us to discuss. Thank you.